The earliest documented kiss was 4,500 years ago. Until now, scientists believed that the first evidence of human kissing came from South Asia and is 3,500 years old. It was from there that this custom was to spread to other regions of the world together with herpes simplex virus, HSV. However, new research pushes the date of the first kiss back more than 1,000 years and places it in a different region of the world. In their research, scientists from the University of Copenhagen relied on a number of written sources from the earliest Mesopotamian societies. In this way, they established that kissing was a well-established practice in the Middle East as early as 4,500 years ago. The discovery was made by Dr. Trolls Pan Carvola and Dr. Sophie Lund Rasmussen. The results of the analyzes were presented in the journal, Science. Ancient Mesopotamia is called the cradle of human civilization. In the area between the Euphrates and Tigris rivers, people wrote cuneiform on clay tablets. Many thousands of these tablets have survived to this day, and they contain clear evidence that kissing was considered an element of romantic intimacy in ancient times. This activity could also express friendship and strengthen family relationships, explains Dr. Arbol, who has been studying the history of peoples inhabiting Mesopotamia for years. According to experts, kissing should not be considered a custom that originated in one region only, from where it spread to the rest of the world. Kissing seems to have been practiced in many ancient cultures, says Dr. Arbol. Studies on bonobos and chimpanzees, humans' closest living relatives, have shown that both species engage in kissing. This may suggest that the practice is a fundamental behavior found in humans. This is why we encounter it in different cultures, explains Dr. Rasmussen. In addition to its social and sexual significance, the practice of kissing may have played an unintended role in the transmission of microorganisms, potentially causing the spread of viruses among humans. An example is the herpes simplex virus, which may have infected the population through kissing. There is a large collection of medical texts from Mesopotamia. Some mention an illness that resembles HSV infection, notes Dr. Arbol. The researcher points out, however, that ancient medical texts were influenced by various cultural and religious concepts, so they should not always be taken literally. It is interesting to see some similarities between Bushanu disease, described in ancient Mesopotamian medical texts, and the symptoms caused by herpes simplex infections. Infected boozen blisters appeared in and around the mouth. And this is one of the dominant symptoms of HSV, says Dr. Arbol. Dr. Arbol and Dr. Rasmussen conclude that future research on ancient DNA may shed new light on the effects of kissing on social behavior and the spread of pathogens. Scientists have trained cows to use the toilet to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Cow droppings can be a big problem on a farm where animals defecate freely while grazing. The accumulation and spread of feces pollutes the local soil and waterways. This can be controlled by confinement of cows in barns. But in these confined spaces their urine and feces combine to form ammonia, an indirect greenhouse gas. In a new study, Scientists have shown that cows can be trained to defecate in a dedicated toilet, allowing them to collect and process waste, thereby reducing air pollution and creating more open, animal-friendly farms. Researchers have trained a herd of cows to use the toilet in an experiment they believe could pave the way for more environmentally friendly farms. All this to collect cattle excrement and process it. 
Livestock waste often pollutes soil and watercourses and contributes to greenhouse gas emissions. Therefore, toilet-trained cattle could limit the damage, but several previous attempts at training have failed. In new research published in the journal Current Biology, researchers have tried a method they call the Mulu approach to train animals to use the barn toilet. It is usually assumed that cattle are unable to control defecation or urination, says study co-author Jan Langbein of the Research Institute for Farm Animal Biology in Germany. However, he and his colleagues challenged this assumption. Cattle, like many other animals, are quite clever and can learn a lot. Why not learn to use the toilet? Langbein asks. In moderation, ruminant feces are good for the soil, but too many cows in one place leads to uncontrollable amounts of feces ending up in watercourses. The urine and feces of cattle in enclosed spaces can combine to form ammonia. Ammonia itself does not directly contribute to climate change, but when leached into the soil, soil microbes convert it into nitrous oxide, the third most powerful greenhouse gas after methane and carbon dioxide. Agriculture is the largest source of ammonia emissions, with livestock farming accounting for more than half of this contribution. For some, this is another reason why, cows have to go. Others, like Langbain and his team, see a problem that can be solved. Toilet training may seem easy, especially for those who have mastered it, but the publication states that, toilet urination requires self-control and coordination of a complex chain of behaviors, including awareness of full bladder, omission of voiding reflexes, choice of latrine, and intentional relaxation of the urethral sphincter to train the cows to use the toilet. The team developed a special training called Mulu. The cows were trained through a system of rewards and mild punishment. When they urinated in a designated spot, they were given a sweet drink or some mashed barley, and when they relieved elsewhere, they were poured with a short stream of water. Researchers gave 16 Holstein Frisian calves diuretics and locked them in a toilet covered with artificial grass to encourage the animals to use the latrine. The researchers wanted the animals to associate urinating outside the latrine with an unpleasant experience. As punishment, we initially used in-ear headphones and turned on a very unpleasant sound every time the cow urinated outside. We thought it would have the desired effect, but the cows didn't care at all. Ultimately, the water jet worked as a gentle deterrent, explains Langbain. Within a few weeks, the research team successfully trained 11 of the 16 calves involved in the experiment. Interestingly, the 11 calves reached the point where they went to the latrine 77% of the time performing as well as or even better than toddlers learning the same life lesson. For the most part, the cows learned well and continued to go to the toilet even after the punishment and reward system ended. Five cows failed to assimilate the scientists' method or were too rebellious to defecate in the latrine, reducing cow waste by 77% would be of great importance for aquatic ecosystems and would have a significant impact on greenhouse gas emissions. However, Langbain hopes that this result can be improved. According to him, the team simply hasn't found the right motivator for the rebel cows yet. After 10, 15, 20 years of research on cattle, we know that animals have personalities and deal with things differently. They're not all the same, Langbain points out. Now that scientists know how to train cows to use latrines, they want to transfer their experience to real farms. The team is now working to create an automated system that could be used to train calves with almost no farmer intervention. 
Langvein hopes that, in a few years all cows will go to the toilet.